Hi there, you guys. Welcome to Real Estate Divas. I'm Jay Lee Thompson with my fabulous co-host, Kristen Gerst. And today we're gonna to be talking about estimating your foundation repairs right after this. Hey you guys, so I'm Jay Lee Thompson with Texel Real Estate and Reformation and this is Kristen Gerst with Capricorn Mortgage. And today we are talking about estimating your foundation repairs. There are some big ticket items out there and a lot of you wholesalers walk in and also investors, new investors trying to get into a property and you don't really know how to put a number on things. We're not saying don't use an expert. But if you've got to make a decision right then and you're walking a property, there are things and that you can look at. in this market, you've got five minutes basically to decide, right? The property came on the market this morning. You need to decide if you want to buy it. So you need to be able to walk these properties, walk them quickly and see these big ticket items and know ballpark, hey, what is this going to cost me yeah, to you fix? Yeah, you've got to have a dollar amount because then there's no way to make sure you're on target with your budgeting. You know, you don't want to overbid these properties, although these days that's kind of, uh, most people are. <laughs> But um, foundation is one of those big ticket items and a lot of people run from foundation and I get it. It, it ends up costing a lot. But um, definitely, you know, once you have it under contract, you're going to get that specialist, you're going to get that foundation expert to come on out and take a look. But in the meantime, when you are walking that property, here's a couple of things that you can uh, think about and remember when you're walking it and and look for so the one of the first things i start looking for is look and to see if it's got foundation i look on the exterior are there cracks do you see the stair stepping in the mortar do you see cracks straight down the brick you know because stair stepping okay there's foundation issues cracks straight down bricks breaking in half there's definitely some foundation <laughs> issues um and you know, and depending on where you're at, you know, one, one thing you need to look at is, is it pure and beam or is it a slab? Exactly. And that is going to decide how long your warranty is because it's hard to find a lifetime warranty on a pure and beam, on a pure and beam foundation. Whereas a slab foundation, yeah, you can get somebody to come in and actually give you a lifetime warranty on it. Now, how good those are is as good as the foundation company that is writing it. Exactly. How old, you know, the foundation company that you have bringing in or that you use, use somebody reputable. If they've only been around for the last two years, three years, there's a good shot that that person who is on there as the owner of that foundation company used to own at a least different one. <laughs> yeah a, at least one not two three foundation companies or maybe they're new to this you know they just branched off from but still you want somebody with a reputation and you want somebody that you know i've got issues two years later there's more movement i want to know i can call you and you're still there so keep that in mind when you're looking at the different you know different companies and how much they're paying per peer because if it's a slab foundation that's how you're going to be charged per peer currently you know what's the cheapest you're seeing for peers out there uh peers are typically starting somewhere around the 250 in texas so you know just to be clear it depends on where you are there are certain places that don't have any foundation issues or some that charge more because it's harder to get the materials or whatever or there's um, places like irving texas that have huge sinkholes that open up in the middle of the yard for no reason <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say as far as um, pe per peers for your cheapest, you know, pressed piling type of cheer peers, then we're looking somewhere between 225 and uh, on up depending on the type of peer because there are several type of types of peers out there. Most people don't even realize that there's more than one kind of peer. And it really depends on what's underneath, what's in the ground, what's underneath, what type of structure are we trying to build up. Um, but if you're talking about a regular house, you know, pretty much anywhere in Texas, then you're starting somewhere around 225 on up to 575. So that's kind of a range. It's a large range, but it's, it, you know, it just depends. 
So the rule of thumb of how many peers, when I am walking a property, I take the square footage of that property and I divide it by 100. And I look at, okay, how many, what, what numbers that is. And I typically will double that. All right, I had to get rid of that horse fly, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody left the doors open. <laughs> I can't have a fly sitting on your head. <laughs> would have been, would have been mildly entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, if I'm looking at a 2,000 square foot house, mm -hmm. I'm going to divide by 100 and I'm going to get 20. And then I'm going to multiply by 2, which, you know, somewhere in the range of that 20 to 40 peers is what that property is going to take to if get. You have to, if you have to level the whole thing. If you have to level the whole thing, 20 to 40 peers are going to go into that property because some of them are going to go in the middle of the house, some of them are going to go on the exterior on perimeters. The exterior perimeter. So it really depends, you know, are you walking into a chili bowl? Can you, when I walk in, one of the easiest ways to test for foundation repair, do the door shut correctly? Because if those closet doors and bedroom doors don't close, you have foundation issues. Is, are the foundation issues just on one half of the house? That's common, you know, so maybe you wouldn't need to multiply by two. Maybe yeah. you could just go, okay, we're going to need about 20 peers here. And I know that my company is charging me $250 per peer. That's going to give you a ballpark. Again, we're not saying become an expert in foundation. We're telling you to, these are the tips in order to get into a house and ballpark it. Get a round number so you know, all right, it's going to be in this ballpark somewhere. Correct. Um, another and, and, technique. And if you're talking about 250 peers or $250 at, you know, $200, $250 per peer for 20 peers, that's a $5,000 foundation repair. Repair. And again, you have to know really the square footage of the house you're doing, divide by 100, multiply by two, and you can go, all right, so it's going to be a range of five to $10,000 to fix this foundation. And you're gonna know when you walk into it and when you're looking at your brick, how many bricks need to be? Well, the bricks are gonna be replaced, but then you're, you know, with foundation, that's the other thing that comes with it is once you fix the foundation, then what cracks you see are, just, those are gonna become bigger cracks. Um, and one of the biggest mistakes that most uh, beginners and new investors make is they think whenever they go in there and they're like, well, the foundation's off just in this room because it slopes in, into a corner. I'm not going to fix that. I'm just going to go ahead and remodel the house. Well, guess what? It shows up in an inspection. Um, they're going to ask for that foundation to be done. And when you have to do the foundation in order to sell that house, well, now you're destroying everything you did to remodel that house. You're destroying Yes. I oh, I thought you were saying, hey, wait a second. I was just going <laughs> to throw in a point, but yeah. I was going to be a gentleman and let you finish your thoughts. <laughs> I didn't mean for you to cut you off. That's all right. The uh, the other, did you want to say something? Yes. yes. All right. I was giving out Jaylee an opportunity <laughs> to finish her thought. She got quiet. There was a pause. No, I was just saying that just realize that you're doing, when you do that, you're going to be uh, putting yourself more in the hole because you're going to have to redo those all of that sheet so foundation rock. needs to be first yeah what i was gonna say is because you brought up the the client you're the seller the person there that hey we thought about doing this room but we didn't is a lot of a, a, a quick tip before you talk numbers or anything is just ask them do they have any estimates because chances are they probably already have an idea of what it would cost to, to get it done so before you throw out any numbers for negotiate because that's what all this is about is negotiating is see if they already have a number because yeah. if you're about to say 20 and in their head it's 40 well you just kind of shot yeah, yourself in the is, foot this is an excellent uh, ryan that's an excellent tip for negotiating thank you when you wholesale yes. right when you're when you're a wholesaler and you're going negotiating for that property if they already have an estimate that says 40 again that's a homeowner getting an estimate as an investor doing multiple properties you can go and shop around and go, okay, well, I'm going to take this one that's half that price, right? And, but, I mean, again, you need to know what numbers you're going to spend and... 
uh, well, and ballpark it. And to ballpark it. And another, so like you said, like door sticking, um, the bricks on the outside, obviously there's the cracks at the corners of doors and windows that you look for. Um, some of them are gaping cracks in sheetrock that you can't not notice, right? You're going to walk in and you're like, oh my gosh, there it is. Um, another little sneaky trick is um, just carry a marble, throw it on the floor. If it rolls to one corner or whatever, if you think it's it's off, then that's that's a real easy way to tell. And if they haven't taken, if you're a wholesaler and they haven't taken that into consideration, that homeowner hasn't taken that into consideration, that right there proves to them, hey, look, Look, there's foundation <laughs> issues. We need to bring that price down. I've never seen a marble win in a home against a hoarder house. <laughs> yeah, no, it will not win in a hoarder house. It definitely, it'll get stuck right away. There is no corners to be had. And it definitely has to have some vinyl. No, yeah. no carpet. No carpet. But another way, I, I walk those rooms. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier if they're, obviously, if it's vacant and there's no furniture in there. But just going and striding across the room and standing in the corner of the room and looking down, mm -hmm. you can basically see, am I high compared to the rest of the room or low compared to the rest of the room? So, and, and that's just a very quick thing. Yes, one, is there, is foundation work going to be necessary? You're going to be able to tell that by cracks, by the doors, not shutting properly. Exactly. And some of them you can tell just by the, you know, it, the line isn't oh, straight see. on the on the windows. There's just several ways to tell whenever you're looking at a home. But to estimate, you want to definitely consider that you're going to be somewhere around 225 to possibly 500, depending on the type of pier. And real quick, we'll just run down the different types of piers. Because one thing I didn't realize is I just sold a house in West Texas. So the inspection came back saying, we think that there's foundation issues. And I was like, really? There's foundation? I, I walked that entire house. I'm used to, I didn't know there were foundation issues. Right. Let me get a foundation company out. There were no foundation companies actually in that in that whole city. No wow. foundation, they had to come from two hours away to give bids because we're talking West Texas and everything's on the cap rock. There's no business to be had out there. So the inspector did not know what he was talking about, came in and said that there was foundation issues when there was none. Um, but that's not even, that that's just goes to show you that depending on where you are in this country or even in Texas, Things are different, you know, you typically in West Texas, you're not gonna have to deal with any of that. The other important thing to mention for inspectors, they want to cover their license. Oh, absolutely. And they also don't want a homeowner coming back going, why didn't you mention this? You yep. know, clearly this was a defect in this property and you never mentioned it. So there are a lot of inspectors out there who will just say these things. Yeah, just, just CYA. Just, they're like, have, have an expert come in. So anyway, um, but that's just to say that, you know, our ground is different. No, different places, different strokes for different folks type of thing. So press pilings is the most common. That's usually what we're dealing with. Um, but we also deal with steel piers um, and those extend all the way down to the hard rock. Um, it's it's not as common. Those are those can get definitely more expensive. Um, reinforced or what they call mini piles, that comes um, with a minimum depth that they don't go down super far, uh, but it's supposed to reach past the active soil. Uh, there's the foam that you've seen out there. Yeah. I mean, people people love that just because there's been so many videos of it and stuff. I don't know what the long term is on that. I know it's cheaper um, and it's definitely speedier, but I don't know what the long term is. I don't on that. either. I mean, there's also mud jacking mm -hmm. that they that they do sometimes. You know, especially in neighborhoods, and a lot of foundation companies will know this. If you suspect that there is no rebar in yep. your foundation, if you know these houses were put up you know, in some of these, you know, less expensive neighborhoods were put up very quickly. And so they would have a house that they said, okay, we're ready to pour the foundation. The code inspector would come over, go, oh yeah, this looks great. 
Then they would, as soon as the code inspector left, they would pull the rebar and go put that into another house. Another house, and then they would pour the concrete. And, you know, you couldn't tell, but it creates huge foundation problems. Exactly. Exactly. So those are just things to consider whenever you're looking at a house and when you're trying to put an estimate on that. Um, if we're moving on to uh, the next, there we go. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we... Wait, you don't have this memorized? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Ryan, can you please scroll down so yes. we look smart? I'm just kidding. Uh, if you're moving on to the next section of that, uh, so we're talking about piers, but we also need to know, you know, when you start jacking with the foundation, you're jacking with whatever is built into that foundation. Pier and beam, you don't have to worry about that as much because everything's underneath the house and it doesn't get affected. You know, the pipes and stuff like that do not get affected as much by shifting the house. Slab? Everything can be jacked with. So if you're, if you're, walk into a house and you know the foundation is very, very bad, mm -hmm. just expect that you're also going to be redoing sewer lines and plumbing lines. And so you need to build that extra cost in. And one tip I will say right off the bat is any investors out there who are getting a house that has foundation issues and you've decided, all right, I'm going to use this foundation company, make sure they do a pre-static test because what you want to do, and especially if you made the huge mistake of not doing foundation before you did the remodel. And now the buyer is insisting. The buyer is insisting that the foundation gets done and you're like, well, crud, that's gonna jack a lot of things up. Well, you don't wanna be responsible for fixing that plumbing issue that might come about. So have that post the pre-static test so that you know, because if it, we're talking an older home, it's most likely cast iron or something like mm -hmm. that that's already leaking a certain percentage. Well, if you jack with the foundation and then the post static test is exactly the same, then you're not, it, it's exactly the same. You, it's not something, that dang fly. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like pig pen today. Yeah. Um, anyway, so something to consider. Uh, but as far as the static plumbing test, uh, my guy usually charges me about $250 you know, for the static test, I don't know. I know I've heard people paying over 300. Um, these are 2021 prices, you guys. So it's, it can, it can get expensive. Yeah, it can um, get the expensive. The last time that I had a camera run through my plumbing, which it's been only about six months, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it was somewhere around 395, 400. Well, if you have the camera though, the camera's gonna cost more. The camera right. costs more. The static test that we're talking about is just a water pressure test. Right. And it's not putting any pressure that, that, that makes people think that, oh my gosh, the pressure is going to bust my pipe. There's even an addendum now that Trek put out that, you know, the sellers agree to the static test. The static test is just, does it hold water? That's it. It's not blasting water through your pipes. <laughs> it's does it hold water without losing any of the pressure? That's it. Anyway, but those are the things you need to consider whenever you're going into a house and thinking that, hey, it might have foundation issues. There are several things. Um, the other, permits. Permits depend on where you're at. I know permits in my area, in the DFW area, they can vary anywhere from $100 to 275 you know? Generally, they're under 200 bucks, but that's another expense. One thing with permits, though, also is to consider is, especially in 2021, the mm -hmm. amount of time. There's uh, There's been numerous the articles. Permit, and, and I just read the one. The permit department is slow. Is broken. Well, yeah. yeah and in it, fact, to the point where builders are now just going, we're not building. Yeah, it, it's we're to the going, point now where, out. like. Out. We're like, going other places. We take the Sicilian brothers. You know, they they bought three lots to build three houses. Uh, we had this big party of tearing down the house. And oh, it was yeah, really I remember cool. that. Hey, we got these plans to build three houses. Um, oh, lumber costs. Oh, permitting. Oh, this. Oh, it's cheaper just to sell the lots. Well, we're not building shit now. Yep. Yeah. So, and that, and again, it's the, the, co it's the, more profitable. It's more profitable correct. just yeah. to sell the lots. Yeah. Right. But again, my point is like with the permits is like that whole, because of Corona, because it's a government entity, 
it's got well, to be people Well, and I mean, that is done. not going to be, I, I hear that other municipalities are better than Dallas. Dallas County is apparently broken. Uh, but there are going to be municipalities all over the country that Absolutely. are so backlogged in their permit processing. And, you know, we are not attorneys. You know, again, a lot of these things, these guys doing this work, some of them go get permits. Yeah. <laughs> some of them They need don't. to hire the Chick-fil-A efficiency team. <laughs> right? right? Seriously, Chick-fil-A needs to go into a side business of efficiency. This is how we, we will come in and make you efficient. But anyway, that kind of sums up if there's foundation needed or anything like that, um, then you definitely want to be able to ballpark that number. Whether you're an investor planning on flipping the home or you're a wholesaler going in there and trying to estimate what your costs are going to be. Excellent. Yeah. Until next time, please subscribe to this channel if you found us beneficial. Even if you didn't find us beneficial, please subscribe <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, subscribe, like, all that business, and um, leave us some comments. You know, if there's something that you want to know about, if there's uh, some big ticket items that you've come across, even some of the scenarios, let us know. And follow us on Instagram. And can, Facebook. And Facebook. And you can DM us there and say, hey, I'd really love to know about this. Can you do a show about that? Thanks so much, you guys. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.